Dealing with the 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs of the idea of understanding. Taken from the 6th chapter of the book of St. Matthew 22 and 23rd verses which I will not even repeat now. But uh, we have to have an understanding. And in this chapter the Bible said wisdom cries to us. It doesn't wait till you come seeking it. It cries to you. Not only wisdom but uh, we also have that which God calls um, knowledge, and we also have that which God calls understanding. And as we stated a few moments ago, uh, knowledge is knowing something. Wisdom is knowing how to use the knowledge, and understanding is knowing the why. Why I have to do this, or why this, that, or the other. All right? I call your attention to the fact that the Bible said in the eighth chapter of the book of Proverbs that wisdom, uh, I think he uses principally the word wisdom here, I don't want to go in there and, and fish out the right words, but it, the main thought is wisdom. It said that wisdom is always, never confuses or never fights anything in God. Let me, let me pick it up from that point. Uh, my mouth shall speak true. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. That's the point I was trying to make. There's nothing forward nor perverse in my, in me. All right, now we want to pick it up from verse number 13. I told somebody to mark this for me, and you probably did and forgot what the mark was. But what verse was we on in the 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs is what I'm after. <laughs> Anybody know? 13. That's exactly where I had it in my mind. All right, and I'm going to teach on living sacrifices, but from where? Did I quote any verse or any chapter? All right, now I know where it's with. All right, Sister Milburn, that's fine. All right. Now, in the 13th verse, again, we're dealing with wisdom. And uh, I think, you know, to walk with God, you've got to have wisdom. Amen. If you don't know that, we better find it out right now. I hear somebody every once in a while, if I'm a fool, I'll be a fool for Jesus' sake. God don't want no fool. How many ever heard that said in a testimony? They call me crazy, but I'll be crazy for Jesus. You ever hear that? Huh? All right. Now, God doesn't want anybody to be crazy for him. He wants people that are real, 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 real sharp in God. It takes wisdom to walk with God. I think you can see in our daily lives... That you and I are in count, in the first place, how many words do you speak in a day? Sister Grady, how many words do you speak in a day? Uh, many of them, huh? All right, Brother, Brother Grady, how many do you speak in a day? How many do you speak to each other? You don't know. And yet your Bible tells you that every word we have to give an account for in the day of judgment. I think then it takes some wisdom to know what to say and what not to say, doesn't it? It takes some wisdom in God to, to, to be able to understand when I should shut up and not say a word. <laughs> and we'd be a whole lot better off if we knew where to keep our mouth shut. Huh? Wouldn't we? There would be no arguments between husband and wife if we knew when to keep our mouth shut. There would be no misunderstandings if we just shut up. However, if one is determined to fight with you or argue with you and you shut up, you're going to have a problem too. You may also have to know when to talk. But then when you do talk, you better know what you're saying. If my wife is after me, and I don't, I keep quiet, give it a silent treatment, that might make her, you know, a little, <coughs> yeah, it takes. 
So maybe I better say something. But surely I better say the right thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or I might throw some fuel on the fire. I don't go tell her I said that. But you understand what I'm saying? We need to have some wisdom to walk with God. All right, now, in verse number 13, he seems to leave the subject, but he doesn't. He said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Now, another verse said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of of what? Of wisdom. It doesn't say the fear of the Lord is all wisdom, but he said when you begin to fear God, that's when you begin to get some wisdom from God. All right? Why? Well, that ought to be pretty well understood. We ought to be able to see that pretty good. The fear of the Lord merely means to put God in his proper place. Is that right? All right, you put God in his proper place, and then God can begin to tell you something. All right, fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Now, uh, I don't, in my mind right now, I don't understand, uh, I don't, I, I, it's not in my mind just what we were going to do in living sacrifices. I probably should have made a little notation somewhere, but I didn't. I do have notes up here, but most of these notes are just scriptures in a sequence, and so... Uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we'll get around to it anyhow. Now, note with me that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And we were dealing last week with hating evil. Where? Huh? Well, first of all, we dealt with hating evil wherever evil is, in others, around us, right? And then we come down with the hating of evil in us. But remember, you cannot hate the person that the evil is in. You didn't get that. I can hate evil with a perfect hatred, but I cannot hate the individual that's doing it. For instance, if a man has is, is got me down, beating me up, can I hate the man? I can't. You sure of that now? He's done black both eyes and half tore off one ear. He got my mouth swelled up and knocked out some of my teeth. And I don't like that. Hmm? Now, can I hate the man? Can I hate what he's doing? Yes, sir. But I cannot hate the man. And I think you can see it is hard. It's very difficult to hate the evil that is being done and not hate the person the evil is coming through. There's really only one in this world that you can hate. Could you tell me who it is? It's the devil. We used to sing a song, I hate the devil. So do I. <laughs> Remember that old song? Now you all forgot that one. I hate the devil, so do I. I hate the devil, so do I. And it goes like that. That's the only one that you can hate, and that is the terminology of God. No man can serve two masters. He either loves the one and hates the other, or vice versa. All right? So we brought it down to our own soul. I have to hate any evil wherever it is. Now, particularly, we want to deal with the evil that is in <clears throat> Is there any evil in you? Let me say it a little bit different. You come along pretty fast on that one. Is there any evil associated with you? I'm giving you a little leeway there. The body that you live in is not, I repeat, is not subject to God. I say rather the law of God, of course, everything is subject to God. Amen. I know you like your body and you take good care of it and you, you know, you buy it what you can and you feed it what you can and you make it as nice as you can for it and you think it's pretty good.
Well, your Pentecost is the only one you're going to get. And that, not the one like you got now. You better take good care of that. That's the only one there is. All right? But at the same time, the worst enemy that you have is your own flesh and your own spirit. Yes, Brother Bob. I will never to do that. Yes, sir. Definitely. So, so God made me evil. What was that? God made me evil. God made you evil. The lamb of creation of fear. Are you? Uh, my father Adam and father Adam. Oh, well, let's just stick with... Uh, your natural father. Let's not go back to Eddie. I think what I have in my mind. Your mother isn't here or she could tell you some things about it. <laughs> All right, now. Well, now. Now we got you where you belong. Now, you came into this world, the Bible said, a sinner. Why? Anybody want to answer? The thing that made you a sinner was the fact that your ancestor by the name of Adam willingly sold himself to the devil. He didn't know all about it, but that's what he did. Not only did he give away his birthright, but he gave yours away too. All right. See, let's say uh, in the, turn to the 15th chapter of the book of Corinthians. I'm not going to turn to it. And, uh, well, maybe I should, though. The 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, I think it will give you the answer in a hurry. And in the 15th chapter, I want, uh, oh, I'll find, I want the uh, first man, Adam, and the second man, Adam. So I'm like, here it is. Uh, it's in the, um, oh, let me see. It's the sequence starts in, uh, No, I don't. I guess I don't have it. I got. I got. I think I got it here in 22. Yeah. All right. But that's really not the verse I want. That's it. That's what I want. All right. Now, note in verse number 22. Well, let's uh, get 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man came also resurrection of the dead. All right, now we have a positive statement. How did we die? Now, remember, he's not talking about, he's not talking about a natural death. What he's talking about is a, a spiritual death. By man came death. Is that Bible? Huh? By man came death. But he goes on to say something else. What does he say? He said here in verse number 22, For since by man came death, by man also must come what? Must come resurrection. Man, it, uh, death did not come because of God per se. However, I think you know that God intended it to go the way it went. Let me say it this way. 
Did God know that Adam was going to disobey God? When he told him, Adam, don't eat of the fruit of this tree, did he know that Adam was going to eat? How do you know that? Huh? Uh, somebody speak clearly to me. I, I'm trying to hear four or five at the same time. How do we know that God intended Adam to sin? All right. Number one, all of redemption was made before the foundation of the world. Jesus was as a lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. And the Bible said that you were to live holy and without blame before him, chosen in him when? Before the foundation of the world. All right? Not only that, but we can come closer to Adam. God told Adam, in the day that you eat. He didn't say if you eat. He said in the day you eat. Do you remember that? Adam, leave this tree alone. In the day you eat, you'll surely die. Did he know that Adam was going to die? We know that. But he, he didn't say, now Adam, if you eat, I want you to know, if you eat, you're going to die. He didn't say that. He said, the day you eat, you're going to die. He knew Adam was going to eat. All right. Somebody said, well, that's true. The cross was before the, the world was. And Jesus is a lamb before the world was. And we were chosen before the world was. But the only reason for this is that we, he knew it was going to go this way. But he didn't want Adam to sin. Does that cross your mind? The foreknowledge of God. God is a master of all masters of anything. I often have said this. You've heard me say it. If I want sulfuric acid, I know how to get it. I'm not a chemist, but I know how to make sulfuric acid. That's the one thing they left in my mind. H2SO4 is the symbol for sulfuric acid. H2SO4. That means two parts of hydrogen, one part of sulfur, and four parts of oxygen, and you got sulfuric acid. Anyone that ever fooled with sulfuric acid, it's a pretty hot acid. Huh? All right. Now, I'm a master chemist, Brother Jerome. I mean, I know my business. If I put H, two parts of oxygen, one of sulfur, and one of uh, four parts of oxygen, and I know I'm going to get sulfuric acid. And then I, I say, well, I didn't want sulfuric acid. It don't make sense, does it? No, you didn't get what I said. I'm a master chemist. I know if I put these ingredients to get, together, I'm going to get sulfuric acid. And I, I'm a master chemist. I put them together and say, well, I didn't want that. I wanted water. Well, the symbol for water is H2O, two parts of hydrogen, one part of oxygen, you got water. If I'm a master chemist and I put this together, then I know, you know I intend to get this. Now, somebody has a hard time believing that God intended to have evil in this world. Who made the devil? What did he make the devil for? Now you're all stumbling now. What did he make the devil for? To be a devil. Hmm? Somebody said, now wait a minute. Wait a minute now. The Bible said that he was made an angel above all angels almost. An archangel. And he got proud and he come up. Did God know he was going to do that when he said him where he said it? Certainly he did. Doesn't God say, I make peace and create? No, you didn't hear that. Is that scripture? How many know that is scripture? I make peace and I create evil. Now that's a positive statement in your Bible. And what is evil? The devil. All right, it's a very precise case of evil. Now to get back to what Brother Barker said. And I'm just going to take a little time with it, and that's all. By one man came death. By one man must come resurrection. Why? Huh? A little louder. All right. 
only because that's the way God said. That's all. God determined death was going to come by the human race and that one, by one man death would come, by another man resurrection would come. That's what God ordained. That's why your Bible tells you the beginning of the creation of God was who? The beginning. Not the end, not the middle, but the beginning of everything was Jesus. And the minute you read Jesus, what do you, what do you know about? What do you think about the minute you find the word Jesus? Next to him, you've got to put a cross. And the minute you put a cross, then you're spelling out redemption. And the minute you spell out redemption, you're spelling out somebody is in sin. Is that right? Did I lose you somewhere? Sister Brown, are you lost? If so, I'll go back and try to find it. Not just yet, sir. Now, do you understand what I'm trying to say? God made this world to get a church. And He is the one that chose the route in which and the way in which He will get a church. Remember, this world did not suddenly evolve out of some explosion in the atmosphere. And then suddenly the sun got hot and the radium rays got a little strong and two little cells got together and boom, the whole thing started off. No. That's not what started it. See, this world didn't start. God looked down and see all these people and say, out of these people, I'm going to get a church. That's not the way it works. God made the world. God put man here. All with one thing in mind. I am going to get a church. Now, mankind does not want to be put in the bind that mankind is in. A man has this charge against God time after time after time in his mind. If you don't want me to be what I am, why did you make me like I am? That basically is Brother Marcus' question. <laughs> All right, now, but the point is, God, we don't know why God made the plan of salvation. He didn't have to do it this way. God could have made each one of us out of the dust like he did Adam, and the minute he got it done, blew in us and took us to heaven. He didn't have to have this long process of getting us to heaven through the thousands of years. He didn't have to do it that way if he didn't want to. Fact is, he didn't even have to use the earth process at all. He made the angels for his glory. He could have made us for his glory. But see, God intended for it to be the way it is. Right? Now you come here, you can't help yourself. Right? Amen. Now, how many of you ever been on a farm? I mean, to, to, to be a farm. All right, Brother Dyer, I remember you've been on a farm. Did you have a horse? And I don't want to talk to you. Did you have a horse? Uh, all right, Brother Mendix and Sister Fox had a horse on their farm. Did that horse want to do what that horse had to do every day? Why not? Well, he don't like to work anymore, you like to work. <laughs> but that horse, you say, was made to ride. Well, what if somebody come up to you and said, you made to ride. And made you uh, lug him around on your shoulders. He said, oh no, a horse not me. A horse is made to work and do whatever you want him to do. That's what you say. And he don't, he don't amount to, to too much to the average person. They, when he gets too old, they sell him to the place and they chop him up for dog food. Make gelatin out of his hooves and he comes back out. You, you, you go buy his. <laughs> that poor horse serves you a double time. He works hard for you and you sell him the blue works and you feed your dog with him. And you turn around and eat him and Joe as Joe. Or didn't 
you know gelatin was made from that kind of a product? Well, you better read it, and it is. There is a synthetic gelatin, but that don't taste nothing like the real thing. All right? Now, we are like the horse. God made us to do a certain piece of work. And whether we like it or not, we're here, and it must be this way. And the purpose of it all is, and I can liken it to the human because God did, and I went through this not too long ago in the Bible class. If my wife had been, as soon as I went up to my wife and said, I used to call her Millie, and, and her name is Mildred, and I said, Millie, where are you married? And I'm hunted all over and can't find nobody. I really don't want you. But I can't get nobody else. Let's let's marry up with one another. What do you think my wife will do? Of course, on the other hand, she might have been in the same body. But what would she have told him? She said, no, sir, I don't want you. I want somebody that wants me for myself. Is that right? Or if she had come to me and I'd said, will you marry me? And she said, well, I'll take it to two, Larry. I really don't want to marry you, but I ain't got no better prospects. I've been looking all over and ain't, I can't find nobody. So I think I will. What do you think I'd probably do? I'd probably told her, and <laughs> forget you. But see, when it comes to God, God wants somebody that's going to cleave to him for what he is. That's why you are a creature of choice. So that when you get to the end, it will be because not only did you sing, I'll take Jesus for mine, but in your life, you lived, I'll take Jesus for mine. You may have this whole wide world, but I will take Jesus for mine. Now, you have to admit, every one of us chose God. Now, he chose us first. I'll have to agree with that. But nobody picked you up like you do a kitten by the back of the neck and carried you down to the altar and dropped you here or dropped you in the water. Every one of us volunteered for this. Then we fit in the program of God. Now we're in the program of God. It's total commitment now. You can't serve two masters, he told you that. Hmm. I'm going to preach on that pretty quick. I can feel it coming. It's been bothering my mind quite a bit lately, and that usually means it's somewhere down the road. I don't know whether when, but it'll be it. All right? You can't do it. God said you either love one or hate the other. That's what it's all about. Now, why God did what he did, I have no knowledge of whatsoever. He's God. Now, sir, your question. What you're, what you're interested in is the devil's influence on what? On you? Well, well, it, Mm, oh. oh, you know, if I didn't hate the devil, I might even feel sorry for him. He's going to go to hell. And he's going to stay there forever. And he gets accused of a lot of stuff he don't do. Uh, what's that? But Barker, the devil ain't made us do half the stuff that we see. Most of that stuff comes out of us. What was that? I agree with that. I agree with that. But we got God. Let's not talk about man without God. We got God. And still we speak sharp. Still we throw our weight around. Still we feel things. 
And the reason for it is that, as I said in the beginning, if God wants you to take us out of here like that, give us the Holy Ghost, and go, boom, like that. Of course, if he did, there wouldn't be no judge here. If there was, Lord, I'd be in a pitiful place. I'd be preaching the gospel, y'all, watch y'all come over here and get the Holy Ghost and disappear, and I'd get new bags in here. And all the time, I'm wishing, where can I go? No, but you see, God could have done that. But, as, as I, maybe you weren't here, but Markham, just uh, not too long ago, I went through the same thing. And uh, I dealt with it from this viewpoint. If you want to understand, you look at the book of Job. All right, in the book of Job. God said to the devil, not to Job, but to the devil. Remember how the book of Job starts? In the day that the sons of God came to present themselves to God, Satan came walking among them. And God said to the devil, not to Job, but to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Now, this is a picture of the church in its present day state. Have you seen my servant Job? He's perfect, as eschews evil, fears God, and works righteousness. Is that what he said? All right? Devil say, yes, I've seen him. I've seen him. But now I want to tell you something, God. He doesn't serve you for nothing. In other words, he doesn't serve you because he loves you. He serves you because he knows a good thing when he sees it. And what did God say? All right. Go ahead, touch him. said like you don't know it. All right, now, then what did God do? He took the hips, not down, but moved it in tight. Let him take the sons and the daughters and everything else. And here the man, Job, said, the Lord gave, the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the devil is a fool. We think he's a fool. Of course, he can't be too smart because he's a devil. But on the other hand, he is for God. He's got most of the folk. All right, now, so the devil come back to God, and God said again, you consider my servant Job. And what did the devil say? The devil made an accusation or a charge to God against every human being in this world. Skin for skin. A man will give everything he has to save his own life. Yes, he will. If suddenly this building, we had an earthquake, and this building began to really shake and rock and whatnot, you know, and we could see the cracks coming, what would you all do? What would you do? You head for the basement. Well, you'd be better off if you headed outdoors. <laughs> Seeing as how you're a little confused, I'll tell you which way to go. But at the same time, what I want to know, now, remember, we can see the cracks coming. We know it's coming in any minute. So here's Brother Brown standing up. Come on, dear, talking to Sister Brown. I'll help you up. I know you're a little slow. I'll help you up. Now, don't get excited, Sister Brown. Is that the way it would go, Sister Brown? Remember, it's coming in any minute. Brother Brown would be most happy to say, let's get out of here. Now, now you all don't. We love one another, don't we? Don't we love one another? Would they be in jail open the door? Would they be in pulling the car to get out that door? No, but you love one another. You wouldn't push somebody out of the way. Sister, Marsha, you could get you and Mike too first. Assuming you still got Mike. See, I know you know that self-preservation of life is a very, 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 very big thing in a human existence. Well, I don't know why you didn't like it, but you didn't like it. But the Bible made a, a positive statement, skin for skin, a man will give everything he's got to save his life. 
his wife, his children, anything. Now when he said man, he means women too. Now, Sister DeRose, you love little Troy, don't you? Hmm? If he was going to die to take his place, if he was going to die, he'd take his place. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I would. I believe I Well, at least she said, I believe I would. Now, Brother Brown, Sister Brown, it's your turn now. You love Brother Brown. After all these years, you still did there's something left there, I think. Okay, if he was up here, you, and, and we're going to bury him, you just shouldn't go with him. Oh, no, we won't even get him that far. He's got to die. God said, one of you have to die in this house today. And Sister Brown would say, I'll go. Something tells me it wouldn't work. None of us would be volunteering, Brother Harry and Sister Martha. I think God would have to make the decision who's going to go. Do you understand what I mean? Self-preservation is a very strong thing. But you see, the whole point of the, of the whole book of Job is that God was showing us how the church operates. This is for the glory of God. Job didn't have a thing to say about what's going on. This is a struggle between good and evil, God and the devil. I hate to say a struggle because God was the one that originated this. He started this. It is no struggle. God ain't fighting the devil. If God was fighting the devil, the devil wouldn't exist only long enough for God to say, get out of here. That ain't no fight. The devil is merely another thing that works for the God, the cause of God, like the sun, the moon, and the stars. You don't like the way I'm saying it. I can feel that. But that's the way it is. He said to the devil, have you considered Job? What for? There he is. Go after him. The devil told God, I can't touch him. You've got my hands around me. Who took the hands down? Why did God take the hands down? But Barker. He took the hands down so the devil could get to Job. Did he know the reaction that Job would have? Yeah. Fine. All right, the devil come back and said, skin for skin, man will give everything he's got to save his life. Now, did God know when he let the devil afflict Job with boils? Touch him now. It ain't his kids dying now. It ain't the fox dying now. Here's Job sitting down in the ashes with a very, very painful thing. If he sits down, he's sitting on boils. And I'm sure if the devil sent boils, they must have been terrific. If he stood on his head, he's standing on boils. Lays on the right side, lays on the left side. He's boils from top to bottom. You can't even conceive anything like that, can you? Can you imagine the pain that would be associated with that? All right, here he is. Now, he didn't want to be there. He hadn't done anything wrong. And yet he's there for what purpose? That God might get the glory over the devil for the purpose of God. Note with me that this man by the name of Job did everything but curse God to his face like the devil said. How many took note of that? I've been through that so many times. He cursed the day that he was born. That's one of the first things that come out of his mouth after the devil's seven days of silence. Cursed be the day in which they said a child was born. A man child, I think he said, was born. Tell God, you're my enemy. Why don't you let me alone and let me swallow my spit? That's getting pretty close to it, isn't it? Huh? All right, not only that, but he told God, the only reason you're uh, Right? It's because the power's on your side. If the power was on my side, I'd be right. He's a kills and God somewhere. Not only that, but he went on to say, I'll fill my mouth with arms. And I'm going to straighten God out. God is misusing me. I do not deserve what's happening to me. 
and was straight in God. He tried to find God, and yet strangely enough, this man had this much confidence in God that if he could just get God to see it the right way, that God would straighten it out, recognizing done to old God. That's why he was going to go out there with God, straighten and let make God see it like it is, you know, that Job is okay. He couldn't find it. Finally, and this is the sum and substance of it, God would not let that man curse him. You know why he wouldn't let that man curse him? Because a devil can never get the victory over God. But that man comes so close to it, didn't he? Skirted right on the edge of it. The only reason he didn't, God held him and wouldn't let him do it. All right? Now, comes the end of the story, and God said, all right, here I am. You want me? Here I am. Where were you when I made this? Sun, moon, star, where were you when all the world got nothing? And here's the man that finally said, I'll put my hand over my mouth. I've spoken of things too wonderful for me. Fine, that's good, but that's not what God wants. God kept the pressure on him. Just bear him down, bear him down, bear him down. I mean, the last question, one of the last questions he asked him is on the gates of death open to you. Can you look past the shadow of the doors thereof? Something of that nature. In other words, can you come in and out of death? Do you know anything about it? You just lost your sons and daughters. You know nothing about it. All right? And finally we find Job down in the dust. And what does he say, Brother Walker? I... I'm whore. I hate myself. I loathe myself in dust and ashes. God said, you're ready now. That's what it's all about. We have to learn how to loathe ourselves. Now, when I say ourselves, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Any propensity to sin that I might find in me, I must hate it. I must loathe it. You understand what I'm saying, Brother Barker? I'm directing it to you because it's your question. Do you understand what I'm, anyone do, does not understand what I'm saying? All right. Now, does the Bible say that we should hate even the garment spotted by the flesh? Does the Bible say that? Anyone ever read that in the Bible? Nobody ever read that. Huh? Did you read that, Sister Marlene? I know. Do you know where it is? I know it's in there. Oh, you know it's in there. Well, you might try that in the book of Jude. Somebody might look that up for me. Because some of you have never, never read it. All right, now, Brother Barker, did I come anywhere near answering your question? Yes. yes. Well, somehow I'm not happy with that. I didn't really get to what you wanted, though, did I? I think what is bothering Brother Barker, oh, I thought it was yours, Brother Dyer, is the fact that he would like to lay everything on the devil that he feels. Huh? Well, give me the object. Throw it at me and I'll catch it. You are. Right. You see, sir, I think you, you, you got a mis misplacement of something right there. You were not made perfect. I don't know whatever gave me the idea you were made perfect. You were made imperfect. You came here imperfect. No, 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 no. God made you imperfect when you came. The Bible said in sin that your mother conceived him. Okay, 
It's going to take you long to catch up with it. Uh, but, 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 but he didn't say, no, hold it. He didn't say your mother was a sinner when she conceived you. That, that the conception of you, that she, for instance, let me, let me, don't tell her I said this. But it doesn't mean that you were an illegitimate child and by when, when the conception took place, she was sinning. I don't know what that means. It meant your mother was a sinner. And your mother brought you forth into the same life that she had. She was a sinner. You came here a sinner. She was not a child of God by nature. You're not a child of God by nature. The Bible said we're a children of child of wrath by nature. And she was a child of wrath by nature. You was a child of wrath by nature. Child of wrath by nature means that God had a right to be angry with you. You were disdained for hell when you come here. Was he created perfectly? Imperfect. Right. Certainly. Yes. What, what was his imperfection? Huh? What was his imperfection? His imperfection? Well, it's probably too numerous for me to, to enumerate, but his imperfection, per se, to put a pinpoint it, was the fact that he loved the woman more than he loved God. Well, I didn't say the devil didn't have. The devil did not have a thing to do with the way that Adam was made. God made Adam, not the devil. The devil didn't have a hand in making Adam. And if God had made Adam perfect, the devil never could have touched him. But Adam was not made perfect. Adam was made imperfect. And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that we have now come to the spirits of just men made perfect. The perfection is in the church. Every man outside of the church is an imperfect man. I, and I, I guess I'd have to say every man in the church is still an imperfect man, but he is in the process of perfection. Every man out there is not in the process of perfection and doesn't have a hope of ever reaching it. And let me get clear. The Bible said we were children of wrath by nature. Adam was not a perfect man. Adam was made a man like you and I. Adam was a man just like you and I. And the only thing Adam had growing for him in the beginning was Adam was an innocent man. But he had all the capability that you and I have in us today was in Adam. What was that again?
Let's go to the first chapter of the book, uh, the second chapter of the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis 2, uh, let me see. Now it's going to have to be the third. All right? All right, and when the woman saw the tree was good for food, the devil's gone on his way now. He just pointed it out to her and he left his, he'd gone on his way. And that it was pleasant to the eyes to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat, and the eyes of both them opened. The devil isn't in there at all. However, I call your attention to the fact that the thing that got Adam was not from the devil, but from himself. Eve came from himself. It was himself that got it. That enough? Yeah. All right, but that. Take a little while. What was that? Before Eve came along, what? No, Adam Adam was perfect until the day uh, that is as far as what we call not perfect in God's sight because God made him to be the perfect in him being. But Adam was not charged with sin. That's a better way of saying it. Until he disobeyed God. I said a few moments ago, Adam was created innocent. All right? Now, when this little baby here was born, this baby was born innocent. Is that right? The baby was born innocent. Oh, this little, I saw another one back here. You got one, haven't you, sister? So, dude, don't you have a little baby there? That little baby is born innocent. Now, you take the, the youngest baby in the house now. It's probably Rachel's baby. Or, or is yours? All right, that one's young. All right, the youngest baby in the house. What does that baby know about life? Nothing. But that baby has already showed anger. That baby has already showed impatience. It doesn't take long. But it comes here in innocence here. All right, now, I, I'm sure that grandmother or great grandmother does not come up and then the baby cries one and say, shut sure up. But there'll come a day when they'll tell that child, you don't do that. And the minute the law comes, then judgment must follow the law. Now Adam could not disobey God. Anything Adam did was okay until God said, Thou shalt not. And the minute God said, Thou shalt not, then capability for sin was there. In the book of Romans, we read it this way, I think in the seventh chapter somewhere. It reads like this. It said, by the commandment, sin came, or by the law, sin came. The knowledge of sin came by the law. I could not disobey God when he didn't tell me not. But the minute he said, thou shalt not eat, then I have the capability of sin. And Adam went right over, right ahead and sinned. All right, Sister Dyer. But you still got a question on that? Or something else? Well, wait a minute. Let me let me deal with Sister Dyer. She has a question there. on the same thing, Sister Dyer. All right, loud. Adam was not born with sin in him. No, sir. Mm -mm. Man is not born in, born with sin in him now. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me feel one at a time. That farm. This is a frog. The frog is in the pot. Everything is okay. When the pond gets in the frog, everything's wrong.
Okay? Now let's not say the bomb. This is this is this is sin. Here's a baby born into sin. Okay? Everything's okay until the sin gets in the baby. Well, Adam didn't have sin, huh? What? Adam didn't have any sin. Adam was not a sinner till Adam sinned. No, the sin came in when he ate. He was not a sinner till he ate. Well, it, that don't make any difference about the influence. See, the devil was not there riding him, saying, I don't eat now. Come on, come on, eat, eat. The Bible doesn't record this. However, the Bible is very careful to tell us that the devil did come to Eve. But the Bible does not say the devil came to Adam. Who came to Adam? Eve. And Eve is a part of where did she come from? She is born of his born and flesh of his flesh. Now where did his sin and temptation arise from? His own self. She, did, she told him, she told him where she got it. The devil tempted me and I didn't eat. She gave it to him, and I often preached on this, taught on it. I don't know how long it took him to make up his mind, but I do know one thing. He did take the wrong step. Huh? The Bible said Adam was not deceived. He had his eyes wide open. He was deceived by whom? But Adam was not deceived. Now, the devil didn't have to come. See, the devil... For instance, uh, when I was uh, drinking and smoking, the devil didn't have to come to me every day and say, I right, get up and hit the bottle. I get up every morning. First thing I did, I reach for a cigarette. Then they have to tell me, smoke this morning. Not one bit. The smoke was in me. Hmm? Now, I cannot even say, perhaps, perhaps, uh, uh, I've done a whole Bible class on this for days and days and days. I cannot say the devil tempted me to smoke my first cigarette. I don't know that. I would have no way of knowing that. All I know is that everywhere I went, men were smoking cigarettes. And it seemed to me if I wanted to be a man, I'd smoke cigarettes. So I decided I was going to smoke cigarettes. I don't remember the devil coming to me and saying, don't you think it's wise? Or don't you think, would you like to see right now? All of this came from the human race. Do you think the devil has to tell people to fight when they get mad? No. All they have to do is get mad. The fight's there. Fight comes. Huh? For instance, you, you, you know what a little child does? A little child bites. Huh? I mean, if that child gets mad, they bite anything. Am I right? Johanna, you had a couple where they bite? Well, most children, when they get mad at one another, you ever watch these kids? They'll come up here like this. They'll actually be shaking their head like a dog or something else. <laughs> And the little salmons, you know, they, they, they come out of the egg and they're little whatever they are, you know. Who teaches them how to survive? No, I don't find God coming down holding the class. <laughs> and I don't think the devil stands there and says, no, don't do it that way, do it this way. You don't have to help me. But these little things, by the nature that they have. They know how to survive and what to do. For instance, now. Sister Melvin, I'm going to intrude a little bit here. Sister Melvin's going to have a baby. 
But Sister Melvin said, I'm going to do it the old colonial way. I'm just going out in the backyard. I don't need no help from nobody. I'm just going to have my baby. I'm, going, I'm just going back to nature with this. No way. She wants all of the help she can get. But don't you know having a baby is a natural process? Don't you know that if there ain't nobody helping you, you're going to have the baby regardless whether you're in the hospital or clean sheets or what else? You'll have it on the ground, you'll have it in the bed, you'll have it in the hallway, up and down the stairs. In a taxi cab. Do you understand me? Why? It is a natural process. It is a natural, as natural as anything else. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll go along with it. But we have a nature. And the nature is a sinful nature. And the way we got a sinful nature is because your father, by the name of Adam, disobeyed God. And the only way you're ever going to get out of that is to have God get you out of it. Now, let's go back to the book of Corinthians again. And in the 15th chapter, you've taken most of my Bible class, but I feel you have to know the answer. All right? Now, note here again in the 15th. As in Adam, all die. That's where it is. That's where the action was. That's where it came in. He was the gate that gave us the nature. All right? Since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, to make things a little more confusing, let's look at the second man. Uh, we can count for the second man, Adam. Adam's nature was a sinful nature. What kind of nature was Christ? Huh? Huh? Because the Bible said he was born holy and it died holy. And that isn't enough. Somebody said, well, I'm holy too, but I still got a sinful nature. Okay, let's fix it up the way he said it. He said, the prince of this world comes and finds nothing in me. You can't say that. Well, temptation is merely a presentation. It was absolutely impossible for Jesus to sin, if that's what you want to know. Absolutely impossible for Jesus to sin. Just like it was absolutely impossible for Adam not to sin. He didn't like that. All I have to do is just let your mind. See, you can put your mind to it all you want to, but just let God talk to you. Adam had to sin. God said in the day you sin, you, you're going to die. That's it. You're going to sin. I know that. When I tell you not to eat, I know you're going to sin. But at the same time, when God brought Jesus Christ into this world, he knew there'd be no sin in that body. Hmm? That body is one body that's going to be presented wholly unto God. Now, that's a broad statement. Let's take it in, let's narrow it down. Let's focus it down. Your body is merely a process whereby the devil can work on you. That seems to be almost denying what we've been talking about. But that's, that's the avenue where, as I've often said, and I'll draw a picture again. 
like get out of the light. That's you. Now, the devil tries to get at the inner man by working on the outer man. God, to get at the outer man, works on the inner man. That's all God's concerned with is the inner man. The outer man don't mean anything to God only as it's associated with the inner man. Is that so hard to understand? I, I, that's difficult. Well, okay. That's by the barber. Now, that's the real Brother Barker. This here is the real Brother Barker. See, this outside Brother Barker is never going to go to heaven. He came from the dust and he's going back to the dust. Is that Bible? Okay. Now, the inner man is the one that's born again. This outside body is only a vehicle to let the devil work on it through all of the process of man. But the devil doesn't have to come and tell him, do this, do this, poke him all the time. The devil don't have to do that. See, we got the wrong idea about the devil. I'm sure that's what we got into this. See, the devil don't have to ride your back. Everybody that shoots heroin, the devil don't have to come and say it's time to shoot again. All he has to do is get the heroin in and go on his, bed, go on his way. And that young fellow or that young girl will shoot heroin every bit they can get on the process of whatever, however they're taking it. And the devil don't have to even be in Timbuktu and they'll still shoot heroin. Why will they shoot heroin? They'll shoot heroin or drink whiskey or smoke cigarettes or do any other thing that they can. They'll do it because it's in their nature. And the devil appeals to them through their nature. God does not appeal to you through your nature. God appeals to the inner man. The inner man. The inner man. The inner man. And he tells you plainly the outer man is not subject to the law of God. And neither indeed can it be. He tells you the outer man cannot go to heaven. Does he tell you that? It cannot go to heaven. The outer man cannot understand the laws of God. Then what kind of a nature does he have? Is my nature from the outer man? Your nature is not from the outer man. No way. It's from the inner man? The inner man is you. You have become a new creation. Have you not? If if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation if he's in Christ. Doesn't the Bible say the old things pass away? And behold, how much? To what? You can say, I looked at my hands and they look new. But that's just the way they look. They're still the same old hands. What is new? The soul. The inner man is born again. A new life. Amen. Now, the Bible tells you in the book of Romans, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, in other words, by the mercy that you've obtained from God, not one mercy but the continuity of mercy you've obtained from God, that you present your body you make your body. You give your body a living sacrifice to God. Right. Hmm? Is that what he said? Now, when he says a living sacrifice to God, he said, what is it? Holy, acceptable unto God. Now, the only thing that makes your body holy it's because you have separated it to God. Like the holy things in the sanctuary. You have been prevailed. 
You have been born again. It's up to you to take this body and present it to God as a sanctified thing. However, however, this body cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. It cannot be saved. Your body never will be saved. It never will go to heaven. Well, maybe I'll have to talk to you some length of time. All right, Brother Dyer, you've been trying to get your Bible over there and you've got your hand up, you're trying to get through. You're in. <laughs> well, in the, in the way I said it, I meant anybody. Now, however, however, see, you, you can't, when you make a statement like that, you have to have a full understanding of what's happening. See, the devil, uh, let me see how I want to say this. I got you, I got you in the state now, but I don't want to add to it. Um. Uh, who is responsible? I'll ask you a question. You're going to shoot something at me. I'll ask you something. But there, who's responsible for the condition of the world as it is today? Well, the huh? Who is responsible for the condition of the world as it is today? If you trace it back to the root, who is it that started all? Huh? God. I just quoted the scripture. I make peace and create evil. evil. Now, if God hadn't made a world, there would be nobody here. If God hadn't made a devil, there would be nobody to tempt Adam. Or Eve, I should say. Now, God is the one that made this plan. God is the one that made this. That's where we got into all this. See, you're going to have to remember everything originated in God. Where by Him, for Him, of Him, the how many things? All things. Everything in this world is by God, for God, and of God. That's fine. Now see, we can go around in circles with it, and we can come up with this thought and that thought, but everything here is by God. It came here because God brought it here. Even the whiskey that men drink is by God. Hmm? It's hard to understand. You, 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 you have to look away uh, into the spiritualness of God, the spirituality of God, to get the answer to this. Because, see, I tried to take you down to the book of Job and show you that Job hadn't done a thing wrong. It was God that started that. If you know the book of Job, you know that God started that kind of thing, did he not? And do you know that God made this statement about Job? He's perfect. He is choose evil. He fears God. And he works nice. If God would say that about you and me, we think we're pretty good people. But note that Job was not good enough for God. And I'm going to tell you something yet, neither are we. Not yet. Job was not good enough for God. And I'll bring you back to Bible class in the last few minutes here. He was not good enough for God. And how did God get him good enough for God? What did God use? to work on him, to get him good enough for God. Hmm? Yeah, but now, note with me, the devil wasn't riding the back, the back of Job all this time. If you're knowledgeable of the book of Job, and I've taught it here on a many times, and the process of writing a book on it now, do you know that you don't read about the devil there only in a very limited way in the book of Job. Where did all this stuff come from that came out of Job? 
it came out of his own self. Now the devil started it. Do you hear me? The devil was the one that told God he doesn't serve you for naught. Let me touch him. Now all the devil had to do was get the boils on him. When he got the boils on him, got him in suffering, got him in, in, down there, then all the devil did was go away somewhere and pick up three friends and send them over there. And then the devil stood back watching things cook. That's all he had to do, sat back and watch him cook. And he cooked for seven days. Here's a man that just seven days before this, but this relatively speaking, as far as we can determine the Bible, seven days before this, blessed be the name of the Lord, he gave and he took away, gave me my sons and my daughters took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay. The devil said, let me, let me get him. See, the devil ain't no fool. He knows how to do it. Let me get him. So the devil got the boils. That's where the devil came in. He gave him the boils. All right. Here's a man sitting down with boys. His friends came and they came to be with him. They took one look at him. He looked so pitiful. They didn't say nothing. They sat down, I think, for seven days. They didn't say nothing. They didn't start nothing. They didn't point to him. But Job started talking. Cursed be the day I was born. They don't believe it, read it. Where was the devil? He wasn't pushing the deal. He didn't have to push it. What was in the man took over. Hmm? What was in the man took over. All the devil had to do was create the situation. That's the devil's job to create the situation. Huh? I don't know, I don't get what you're saying. No. No, he didn't he didn't tell him, Job, sin, Job, do this, Job. No. He just told God, let me touch him. Let me touch him. I'll get him touch him and touch him. See, the question was, does he retain his integrity? Okay. Let me get him, let me touch him. Right? He was touched. And the devil didn't have to ride his back. All the devil did was walk away. The situation is there. Now, all he had to do was let what was in the man take over. I, I can't surprise you can't see that. I'm really surprised you can't see that. All that was in there. See, there's things in us. Pride is in us. Anger is in us. Impatience is in us. Self-will is in us. That came here by nature. The devil didn't put that in me. God made me that way. By the nature that I had when I came here, I got that. The lust that I had, the devil didn't put that in me. I was born with this kind of stuff in me. Here's the devil's job. The, the devil's job is to make Create something, show me something. I often take it like this. The devil comes along like this, sister the You like that? That's the way we do with a baby. Now, you know, you ever, you ever do that with, a, with, with somebody with a little toy? Look at here. You want them to play with a watch or play with something bright. Now, what are you doing? You're not trying to put something in the child, but you're appealing to something that's already there. Do you hear me? You're appealing to something already in the child. It's already there. You can't put anything in that child. You can beat him into submission. You can teach him how to go. But, you know. Oh, drop something, isn't it? Now, you, you, you see, that's what the devil does. He, he brings something and appeals to something that's in you. Now, Here's another simple illustration while we're talking about baby. A baby comes into this world not being taught by anybody, yet that baby knows some things. For instance, who teaches a baby how to suck? Hmm? 
You watch a little baby's mouth when he ain't nothing to suck. Do they do this? Come on, you mothers. These fathers have been doing all the talking. Now you mothers, you, you come on, get with me in here these last few minutes. There's a baby automatically. Huh? That little mouth is working all even in his sleep, that little mouth go. Huh? Put your finger in his mouth, he'll suck on your finger. Put a pencil in his mouth, he'll suck on a pencil. Put a pop in his mouth, he'll suck on a pop. Who talked of that? It's part of his nature. It comes here by nature. Huh? It's part of his nature. You didn't teach a child how to breathe. It's his nature. Huh? And a whole lot of, like he comes here with the ability to swallow, he comes here with the ability to breathe, he comes here with the ability to hear and to move his fingers. This is his nature. And then the things we're talking about is part of his nature that you can't see. He comes here with a will. He shows you that before anyone has ever told him nothing. He'll still not that. What's he trying to do? It's his nature. Now the devil's job is to, he knows what's in a man, and it's his job to appeal to you. You like that? No reaction. All right. No reaction. You didn't like the keys, did you? <laughs> you grin now. See, by the way, this is the devil's job. He's got a bag full of stuff. And all he has to do is appeal to the nature that's in you. Hmm? Is that right? Okay. Now, now I was likening it to temptation. Huh? You don't like that? Well, here, $20. Yeah. Even Steve's looking now. <laughs> but you see, maybe she resists this. Maybe she, she, she doesn't want no part of it. All right, but the devil doesn't stop. Would you go for a 50? We'll just assume she'd go for a 50. Now see, that's the way to do it. He just keeps on probing, 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 till he reaches Peter somewhere. All right, now, you take you and I, we're spiritual people. There's nothing spiritual about your flesh. There never will be anything spiritual about your flesh. All right? So the devil works at us through our flesh. There are some things in God that are strong lusts and permissible. But only permissible under certain conditions. Sex is one of them. Well, you can sit quiet, but uh, you're all adults. That's one that's permissible on only under certain conditions. Now, you're sitting pretty quiet. Now, you all started something. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you, there is nothing that I know of. Anger would be the next thing. There's nothing I know of will take over a human mind in a human existence like sex. Legal or illegal? Now you know, you sit pretty tight. Well, now you all got me here and we're five minutes over time. We're going to take a little more time too. If you have to go, just get up and go. <laughs> However, I'm talking about sex now. Everybody's going to stay. <laughs> I teach the young people of this church when I get a chance to get to them. I teach them. This is one thing I teach in this church. I don't believe you ought to be hugging and kissing one another in a corner somewhere as a saint of God. Even if you're engaged, you ain't got no business wrapped up in each other. Because what is going to happen is your nature is going to exert itself. And I tell them this, you may not mean no harm at all. But once you get started on a certain path and reach a certain point, you're going to do what you're going to do if God was standing right out of that. That's one of the most powerful emotions when it gets so far of any emotion that I know anything about or have heard anything about. That is, it has to do with the flesh. Now, what God wants us to do is to take and become spiritual people. 
That doesn't mean that your body doesn't have these emotions. But you are to take these and control them. You're to put them in under control. Then you are, by the very verse of the fact you have these emotions, anger, uh, frustration, impatience, and all of this under control, then you present this body as a separated thing to God. Even though it's never going to be made, never going to be made heaven. Just like the, the holy vessels that were sanctified and counted holy in the Old Testament. You remember these vessels? You're a student of the Old Testament. You remember all these vessels that were holy unto God? The only reason they were holy, they were separated unto a work for God. And you are separated unto a work for God. And you are to take your body and present. Your body won't be saved. It can't be saved. It never will be saved. And when you talk about your change, this ain't going to be changed. Even, even the people that don't have the Holy Ghost knew that because the man said this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise. He didn't say this robe of flesh will be changed now go. And the man wrote that old prayer meeting song. Sweet heart of prayer. He said this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seek the everlasting prize. And God tells you your house is coming from heaven. Hmm? Right. Now, this is where the battleground is. This is where the battle. But the devil don't have to come and tell people to get mad. Huh? The devil, the devil don't have to tell people to get mad. I'm going to take just, just a few minutes more. Here's a young man. I've often said this. Here's a young man. Pray this one. I had a wonderful session with God this morning. He's a young single man. Oh, he might be a married man, but he's he's good saved brother. Brother John. Say hello out there. You be that nice little brother. You did pray this morning, didn't you? I did. Huh? I did. You did? You get over there and walk the words me. Now he's saved. He ain't got his mind on nothing but God. Come on. Mine now. <laughs> well, that didn't work so good. Let's try it again. Hey, buddy. the closer that you can look at this the way it is the better off it is for you if you put all this stuff on the devil you're almost like Flip Wilson the devil made me but if you put it where it is 
most of it is right in you. Presents occasion, let you take over. Then you know how careful you must be. How prayerful you must be. Because there's no way that any of us can shape our human nature. If we could, wouldn't it be easy to walk with God? Hmm? If I could shape my human nature, the devil could come with anything he wanted. It wouldn't bother me a bit. Hmm? Do you understand me? I hope I make it clear. Now, can you imagine Jesus was affected by the devil at any time? No. See, we saw one that was born holy. We saw one that died holy. Not a spot. There's one person that never had one sin in his life. He was not even born a sinner. Huh? I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus was not born a sinner. Now, he was born into sin, just he came into a world of sin, just like the rest of us. But he was not born a sinner. You were born a sinner. Jesus was not born a sinner. I've got time. I have another question. I don't have time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. If you don't, tomorrow night's Bible class. And I, it's, it's a question and answer Bible class.